when we're building zaps um it is basically learning to be slightly like an engineer um and learning how to code a little bit so we can write a zap that can take uh, a printable order we could send it over to a tool called ShipStation. We could probably do that in 10 steps. The Printavo developers to make a shipping label probably have 1500 lines of code. So that just goes to show like Zapier is not going to be perfect. And one of the things I'll, I'll kind of forewarn you on when you're using Zapier, we don't use it for any accounting purposes, like because occasionally it breaks. Occasionally we'll get bugs through it and it'll say, hey, this zap failed. Well, you know, I, I can't be trusting my accounting systems to be doing, you know, a lot of a lot of that stuff. So when you're using Zapier, realize that you are an engineer, you're working on this machine, you're going to mess things up, you're going to break them, but you're going to continue getting it better and better and better. And if I look at my zaps, like I'm always thinking, OK, how can I make that one step better? What's one application that I can use that might help it out a little bit? Um, so don't get frust frustrated in it, but like take it in very like elementary building building blocks. So that's just kind of my my thing before we really get into it. So uh, I'm gonna dive into Zapier. We pay for the premium account of Zapier uh, because uh, if I look at my Zaps, um, I mean we have you know in the last week 656 different Zaps that are firing off every single day, minute, seconds, whatever. Um, so you pay per zap, basically. It's kind of like old school text messaging where um, you might not, you know, like you only have 2000 text messages. It's kind of how Zapier works. Some of the zaps we have to be careful about because they can run continually in the background. And I'm gonna point that out to everyone. But when you log into Zapier, um, basically it's, its main homepage is just searching with what you can connect. So how can I connect this with this? And you can just type in whatever. So, you know, if you wanna type in Printavo, how can I connect Printavo to, um, let's just say uh, Gmail or Google Sheets? And it says, okay, beautiful. Those two things can connect. And what it'll actually do is it'll suggest different types of zaps and you can just click it and say, try this, right? So save a new Printavo invoice to a spreadsheet. Maybe that's something that you want to do or that's something that you want to track. But basically what it'll do is it'll give you suggested zaps and you can click them and you can just kind of start working on it and it'll talk you through it. Zapier is very user friendly. What it's basically trying to do is dumb down coding and, and dumb down what we call two APIs talking to each other, right? So with Zapier, there's basically two major functions. The first function is going to be triggers. The second function is going to be an action. Um, what's awesome is um, uh, Luke from Printavo um, made a guide for everyone that he just put just just put in the in the chat, where you can see what like the documentation for all of the triggers and actions. So trigger is going to um, react. Basically, it's, it's gonna be what the trigger is, right? Um, and then the action is what's gonna happen after that. So every single zap is always gonna have a trigger and an action. Printavo, believe it or not, could be both the trigger and the action. You could send it for loops if you wanted to. Um, but you might find that you use Printavo for the trigger, and then you use another app for the action, and then you actually go back to Printavo to do something else. It's important to understand with every zap, there's a trigger and there's an action. Now, uh, Zapier is not linear in the sense that you can run multiple zaps at once. You can also create multi-line zaps with several different tools. So I have a zap that is 11 different zaps in one, and it uses Gmail, Monday, Printavo, um, text formatters, uh, just so many different things. And so, um, you know, you might not just have like one zap. I think after today, uh, the goal that everyone should have is to be able to make at least a zap that does something simple, go from here to there, right? So let's go through um, the triggers. Um, 
The triggers um, that Printabo has built um, are very basic, and these are what the triggers do. So one trigger could be when a new customer is created. So start thinking about or start brainstorming, what do I wanna do with that data when we create a new customer in Printabo? I could think off the top of my head right now, when one of my salespeople puts in a new customer, I wanna add that customer to MailChimp. So we know that we have their information captured so that we can start marketing to them. So that would be a time when you use the new customer trigger. Maybe you wanna take it a step further and say, when we add a new customer, then you can send them a welcome email. Hey, we saw that you know, you, you've been working with someone. Um, I'm Steven, I'm you know, one of the founders of the company. If you need anything, I'm here for you. That could be automated. Say you had a new customer and you're also using a tool like close.io or you're using a tool like um, uh, HubSpot or any of the CRM tools, you could say, when we create a new customer in Printavo, then we want to add them to our CRM as well. The payment trigger is just when a payment is applied in Printavo. Um, and so this is for me, something that I use just to see how often we're collecting money. I literally have a Slack channel between me and myself called receivables. And whenever we apply a payment in Printavo, it just sends me a Slack message saying you got money. Okay. And that's for me to know like, okay, cool. We collected that. All right. We collected that. Oh, that $7,000 order. We collected that. It's just a ticker that runs in my background and I check it every night. Um, because when we talk about cash flow and we want to know how much money we have in our bank, I'm like, Ooh, okay. We got, you know, 30 grand in or whatever, 10 grand in. So that's something that we use for payments. You could use the trigger payment to send a thank you email if you'd like. Um, you could do a lot with that. Uh, inquiry, if you use the inquiry tool that Printavo has on your website, um, basically you can take that, capture that data whenever an inquiry comes in and then you can do something with it. Um, you could send them an email saying, hey, someone's gonna be with you shortly. Uh, or someone, you know, or you could add them to your MailChimp like we talked about. Uh, another trigger is called task is when a task is created. We don't really use this one that much, but say um, if a task was added, you could uh, find the user that it's associated to and maybe send them a text message. I'm going to cover the red one last because that is something that we need to use caution with. Uh, the trigger for expenses is going to be when an expense is added. Maybe you want to chart that to a Google Doc. What we do with all of our sales reps or our sales general managers is they have to add the cost of the goods into every product or to every invoice. And then that's how they get their commission or they calculate commissions based on gross profit. So if you wanted to chart out the invoice and the expense to a Google Doc and attach it to a user, you could then start to graph that over time. New invoice status, you will never want to use that because that's literally if you go into my account and create an invoice status, maybe Bruce made that when he was a teenager coding, coding that one. Um, so you will never use the new invoice status unless for some reason you want to notify the world or someone when you've created a new status in Printavo, not updated status. Uh, new user, um, if you know you add a new user and you want to send them a welcome email or send them something, Here's an instance where um, say you're adding a contract customer as a user in Printavo and you have a welcome guide for them. You could say when we create a new user, send them the welcome guide for our contract customers. Updated quotes and invoices. So uh, that is a trigger that you will use a lot, but I have to caution everyone because updated quotes and invoices you might think that it's when a status actually changes colors, right? So, um, you know, when I change this from um, printed to delivered, go, you know, and that's the status change, that's, that's what triggers it. Believe it or not, it's actually if 
any change is made to the invoice whatsoever. So literally um, on my screen, if I take this order and I push it right here, that will create a trigger right there because I have changed the production due date on that order. So we have to use a lot of caution because if you have triggers running, if you, if you are trying to rely it on being in a status, but maybe they're updating the artwork on it or they're um, changing something on it like a date or they do anything, literally they open it up, they change it and they click save. If you change anything on that order, it will create the trigger. So we wanna be very careful because um, you could run out of zaps instantly. And I didn't realize this at first. And then I was like, I mean, we have invoices changing literally all the time. And I use like five or 6,000 zaps. And I was like, wh where did this come from? So it is on my um, birthday list from Bruce to create a zap that um, is only status based. And that would help us out a ton. Um, and that's something that um, he said that we could we could start working on. We're not going to give you a due date for that because I just asked him like a couple weeks ago. But we do know that that is something that would help a lot. So just don't if you know, don't think that it's just the color change is going to be the updated invoice is going to be the trigger. It's any change on there. So uh, if you see a zap happening twice and you're like, why is this happening twice? It's because you literally changed one thing on there. And I have a workaround for that.